Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Disney Dining Show. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Mr. Sean Falk. Hi. And Mr. Steve Porter. Hello. And in today's episode, we are going to give you our thoughts, or actually, these two are going to give you their thoughts on Captain Cook's, the quick service dining location at Disney's Polynesian Resort. But before we get to our thoughts on it, we have a little video to show you first. Steve here. Um, I'm here with Sean today. We're at uh, Captain Cook's at Disney's Polynesian Village. Uh, it's the quick service location um, and he hadn't been in so long that he, he wasn't even sure if he had been here. So we wanted to come check it out. Um, I got the pork nachos for, what is it, $9.29. Um, and I've had these before but I hadn't had them in a while so I wanted to get them again. They It's pork obviously with pineapple and some uh, tomatoes and cheese and it's it's kind of an interesting thing they have it's not uh, tortilla chips it's almost like a potato chip that it's on um, served on so overall it's pretty good um, it's not my favorite favorite thing on the menu but my favorite thing on the menu is probably actually what Sean's eating so I'm gonna pass it over to him overall though I'd say probably like a 7 out of 10 for me for this so yeah Alright, um, and I got the Thai coconut meatballs. Uh, they are $9.49, and I think Steve's was $9.29, so they're all like pretty much in the same price range, just over under $10. Bucks. Um, so this is, uh, it's got rice, it's got meatballs, uh, and it's got a like coconut sauce literally all throughout it. So it's all in the rice, it's all in the, the uh, meatballs. Um, the meatballs are very good they're very hearty meatballs and all that like there's no like filler material in it or anything um, it is all meat so um, I actually like it pretty good it's I think when I get about halfway through I'm gonna stop because it's all coconut taste everywhere so it's very sweet um, but beyond that it's good I'd give it probably seven out of ten right now I'm gonna give it like an eight and then probably by the time I'm done I'll give it like a seven so it's pretty good so. So we just finished up. Um, I just had the pork nachos. I didn't finish everything because it was pretty big portion size, um, and I had some food earlier, so it's kind of full. But overall, this is my probably my favorite. But right up there with the Harambe Market as one of my favorite quick services at Walt Disney World property. So yeah, I highly recommend Captain Cook's. The pork nachos aren't necessarily my favorite thing, but um, I like kind of like everything. And it's a great stop on your way if you're gonna head into the Magic Kingdom. You can get a much better quick service meal here than you could, I think, in, 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 in the Magic Kingdom. So yeah, I give high marks, I love this place. All right, so I was not with you, obviously, for this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Steve, why don't you start off, uh, tell me about tell me about your experience. So, right off the top, I'll say it's probably, Captain Cook's is probably one of my favorite quick service locations, so I came in with high expectations. Um, and we were a little full, because we had just had the pineapple Dole Whip for the segment for the Tuesday show right before. But that being said, I still love this place. It's the perfect place to stop on your way to the Magic Kingdom. Um, cause I think it's much better than any of the quick service in the parks. Um, oh but, yeah. Captain, I mean, Captain Cook's is amazing. Yeah. You know? And for the price, I mean, I think it's, you know, you're paying what you'd pay in the parks for a quick service meal, but I think you're getting so much better. So uh, this first like cosmic rays or, I mean, it's uncomparable. Um, that being said, we were so full that I barely finished my nachos that day, but I do like them. And, uh, so you're not even sure if you've been there before. Yeah, I couldn't remember. It turns out I have been there. So uh, I had went once, and um, the first time I went, I believe I got a um, – it was like a chicken sandwich with pineapple and barbecue sauce. I don't know – I didn't see it on the menu this time, so I don't know if maybe they don't have it anymore or maybe I just missed it. So, uh, And I remember that being really good. Um, this time I just asked. But one of the cast members, like, what do you recommend and what's good? And um, she had recommended the uh, the coconut meatballs, and they they ended up being really good. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great restaurant. I think it's a great choice of food that's like different from inside the parks, um, and that's kind of something that Disney World lacks sometimes. Like compared to Disneyland, like they have more varieties of food, whereas here it's like burgers, chicken nuggets, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing for the most part. But um, I think it's a food you gotta like to 
go like you know if you got kids or whatever you know at, at, that can be you'd want to check the menu first and make sure like hey or can can my kid eat something here but you know because it's stuff had curry or coconut or whatever yeah, it, the situation is it is slightly more adventurous than say like electric umbrella or mm-hmm. just something that has like standard burgers and standard chicken sandwiches so it is a little bit you gotta like pineapple you gotta like coconut you gotta mm-hmm. like some l- slightly more adventurous things but i don't think it's anything that crosses like you know it's not like you're eating at some oh yeah unique crazy i mean it's just slightly unique enough to make it worth going there worth trying yeah kind of expand your boundaries if you're someone that does don't think you like to try new things you can mm. i don't know you can try a lot of cool good stuff here so i don't know and, yeah. and the prices are i mean they, they are it, it is consistent with mm-hmm. quick service but as you pointed out especially because the those meatballs are like my favorite oh thing. they're so good at yeah. any quick service uh location anywhere at walt disney world I, they are absurdly absurdly good right um but you know um it's a good portion size too yeah the portion size is a good the price point's good um they also do breakfast uh there as well but now would would this be something you would suggest like somebody wants to take an afternoon break from the park to go have lunch hop on the monorail i mean part of that for me is that i think the polynesian in general is a great place to just stop if you're going to do take a break from the magic kingdom uh you can kind of maybe stop at trader sam's later get this for lunch um so i like this resort just in general or just like i said before popping in there before you go into the magic kingdom for breakfast i like their um the Tonga toast that they have there is delicious. Now, I mean, for people it's who don't know what sugary, but right for people who don't know what Tonga toast is, it's banana stuffed sourdough bread, battered, deep fried, and dusted with cinnamon sugar. So enjoy your coma. Um, but, but it's delicious before then. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I think that it's somewhere really good for. Um, I haven't been there for breakfast, but I think it'd be worth leaving the park to go there for lunch for me because mm-hmm. I think if this were a restaurant and it was the Polynesian restaurant in Adventureland or whatever, or they sold the same food in um, uh, Skipper Cantina kind of thing, they would charge easily double for it for the same portion size that you're getting at the Polynesian, and it's still of that quality, to, in my opinion. It, so. it will be interesting to see if this happens, and I don't think it will. Um, but I know Skipper's Canteen hasn't been super. They haven't really had the numbers there. I don't think that Mm -hmm. they really wanted. That's why they kind of are trying to get as many people in there as possible. But if they ever made that place into a quick service, they should just steal this. Not saying that they should, but if they do, they should just steal this menu and implement it over there. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Yeah, Yeah, no, that that would be a really good idea, actually. But they, they should do that or whatever, which they should all right, they should do more jokes and stuff at Skipper Cantina. I know that's not what we're talking about. Well, but I, they should. I, you know, you don't think Tangaroa Terrace? Uh, Tangaroa Terrace. That, that, that's that, in Disneyland. Well, oh, Disney. The, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of Disneyland. Um, the uh, uh, our Tartuga Tavern. Is yeah, that what you're yeah. Well, you could do well, not so much that's, Tartuga Tavern, but there's that. Um, God, why can't I think of the name of it? Um, it's right there across from the camels. There's like that, that, that there's like a, a counter. There's like, a, a, it's like mostly oh, drinks Aloha and stuff. Isle. Aloha Isle. Alo- thank you. Yeah. Um, don't just, you think adding, adding food like this to that would be? That would be cool. I just don't know if there's enough seating there. I don't know if they would have enough room to. Right, right, true. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would love if they had some of this food. Because I don't know. I, see, I, I think Jungle Skipper Canteen has some amazing food. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's what I like about it is that it's different. It's mm-hmm. not the it, it's not the the burgers and chicken nuggets that you get everywhere else. Oh, yeah. It's very specialized, and I thought it was a really inspired menu. And I really have wanted it to succeed because I wanted Disney to be inspired to do that in other places. Mm. But I, I think you know the food from Captain Cook's outstanding counter service. Mm-hmm. Um, I also like the setup of it that you, I mean, I know a couple uh, resort quick services do this. Uh, Gasparilla Grill at uh, Grand, Cal- or Grand Floridian does the same thing where you order and then they give you your number and then they bring the food to your table. Mm-hmm. I just like the service. It feels more deluxe. Not that, I mean, it's still quick service, but it feels like you're getting served your food and it, it right. just ups the quality. Well, it also of the- moves that 
moves that that crowd of people right that are you're sitting not just there standing waiting. you're not standing it with a bunch of people around you all waiting for oh that's me that's me i don't know so how much do you remember how much i ended up spending so i pulled up the menu uh the pulled pork nachos were 9.29 um plus tax um it's a pretty big short portion size so i think that's well worth the price um i didn't even finish all mine um so, yeah, I think the value here is great, definitely worth it. And I think relating it to Skipper's Canteen, I feel like this is kind of the equivalent, the quick service equivalent of that in that it mm-hmm. takes kind of something, bl- not bland, but something just standard like burgers and stuff like that and up making it unique enough to you're expanding your horizons kind of the same way that uh, Skipper's Canteen takes standard uh, theme park food and makes it into an experience of unique options. Right. No, I agree. I, I kind of, I, I actually, I don't know that I would want it in the park if I was somebody who goes to the Polynesian a lot and I'm like a patron of that hotel. Um, I just, I don't know. I kind of want it to stay as a special thing over there. Cause like Dole Whip is kind of already right. in both places. Mm-hmm. You place, pay so much money to be at the Polynesian, that kind of thing. And then not to be like, Oh, like, snobbish about it like oh this is mine i'm paying for it but no I it is also kind of like this that's, is mine that's a good i'm point. paying for it like you know yeah that's so. a good point oh i i i also think that you know we, we kind of touched on it the, the price point here most of these items there's only one item that i can see on the menu that's over 12 dollars, and that's the third pound angus bacon cheeseburger 12.49 everything else is you know under under twelve and in many cases under ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the uh, Thai coconut meatballs that you had were nine dollars forty nine cents. Oh yeah, it was a big portion size too. It was really. It filling. is. It's filling. Yeah, it's filling. It's on that filling. rice. It's on that better mm-hmm. rice. Yeah, mm-hmm. which you know certainly helps fill up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I also like that this has uh, inside and outside seating too. Mm-hmm. So you have kind of a you can pick if it's a nice day out. You can go outside, have a view of uh, Seven Seas Lagoon, or you can stay inside. No, there's a reason this is absolutely one of the most highly rated counter service restaurants at Walt Disney World and certainly among the resorts. So um, scale of one to ten um, for quick service, I'd give it a ten. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there was nothing wrong. Everything was perfect. I, yeah. I mean, I can't think of anything that was wrong or anything I would have changed. I mean, it's a personal taste kind of place where like if you don't, I mean, with my meal, I love coconut. So if you didn't, you would hate what I ate. But like if you do, then it's perfect for you. So yeah. So I would say that when we were there, I was really full, like I said, because we had just had the Dole Whip mm. upside down cake thing. And so I gave my pork or pulled pork nachos like a seven out of 10, but most of that because I was just so full. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, in the experiences I've had here a bunch of times, I would say it's also a 10 out of 10. Really? Yeah. yeah. A 10? A 10. I mean, uh, look, basing, I love the place, ba- I think, but I think very few places rise to base, a 10. Basing it off the fact that it's a quick service location. This is right. not Jico. It's not. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Of course yeah. not. I'm right. not suggesting that it be compared to Jico. I'm yeah. comparing to, you know, for, for what it is for. A, 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 I think you know, they, for a quick service location, right. I don't think they could do better. Okay. Yeah, I don't either. I can't think of any quick services that have what this offers at the price this offers on and, disney property yeah, on disney property worth yeah. it worth it for people to go out of their way if they're yes. not staying at the polynesian yeah. is it worth it for them to go out of their way yes yeah if it's hot day and you want something different than like park food and want to do something a bit different like let's say you have a kid that doesn't ride a lot of the major attractions and like grandma grandpa wants to take this kid away and do something else like ride the monorail great, around great stop there at the polynesian eat like get dole whip there get these things at a hotel right there that and they, kills an hour or two of your day and just the around. the atmosphere at the polynesian by itself it's, yes. like, it's like its own little secret vacation within your vacation agreed oh. agreed all right so there you have it uh both of them giving captain cooks a 10 so there's a uh, there's a reason it's so popular i guess so that will do it for this episode of the disney dining show we hope you enjoyed it We'll be back with you again next week. Thanks for being with us, everyone.